Ja, Star Wars ist, glaube ich, der größte Aufhänger, denke ich mal, für alle. Also ich bin damit auch groß geworden, deswegen kann ich mich heute extrem darüber freuen, dass wir halt wirklich Daniel Logan hier haben. Das ist für mich persönlich eine ganz tolle Sache, weil man war damals so als Jugendlicher, aber dieses Kino gegangen, oh, Star Wars, und dann natürlich Boba Fett. Also das ist eine, für mich wirklich eine Ehre. Ich glaube, da können wir uns beide sprechen. Wir sind beide Star Wars Nerds, was das angeht. Und ich glaube, da macht es auch am meisten Spaß. Und ja, yeah, here is the one and only Mr. Daniel Logan. Ho! Ja. Großen Applaus für Daniel Logan, bitte! Guten Tag! Guten Tag, everybody! How you doing? Was ist los? What is up? Thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting not only me, but supporting Roleplay Convention and everybody that comes to be a part of this. Because it's not only me and the other actors, but you have some of the vendors, people who sell things at booths, comic book artists. So we all thank you together through me. Das ist auf jeden Fall eine nette Ansage von Daniel Logan. Uh, so, uh, we can sit down. So, we can just talk a little bit. This is my best friend. He doesn't get to travel very much. So, I figured I would show him a little bit of Germany, just because I, I like to take him around in my pocket. He's like my Groot. He's very big. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Daniel, sit, just sit okay, down. Okay, sure. Let's take a seat. Sure. Okay. I like you guys' PCs, man. And the Nintendo Switch. There you go. So, I'm Daniel Logan. I played young Boba Fett in Star Wars Attack of the Clones. I was also very, very lucky and blessed to be a part of the Star Wars uh, Clone Wars cartoon also. George Lucas gave me both the jobs, and I feel very honored that I got to be a part of it. So, were you a big fan of Star Wars before you just got these invitation to the, to the big movie? I grew up in New Zealand. You guys know New Zealand? Yep. I grew up in New Zealand where we only had three TV channels. One wasn't too good, two was the best, and three was always the news. So there was never Star Wars on the TV set. I never ever heard of Star Wars before I got in the movie. Never, never before. Never before had I ever heard of Star Wars. Okay, and then over one night you rise up with who, Star Wars. Who, who? Yeah, that's, that's some Star Wars as well, so um, you, you, you said you never heard before I, I, Star Wars, but when you were in it, what was the feeling like? You know, I was 13 years old. I never really understood what I was given at that age. It wasn't until I went to the first Celebration Star Wars, and I had about 80,000 fans just wanting to grab and touch me. And it was that day I realized what kind of character Boba Fett was and how of an impact he had made on Star Wars. Yeah, for many people, uh, Star Wars is uh, like a religion, so it's an, ep it's an epic story, and so on. then, you was a small boy, and over one night, you really rise up. See, you've got to understand too, right? It's not that I am not a fan. I am the biggest Star Wars and Boba Fett fan there is now. Truly, right? In New Zealand, opportunities are very rare. M my mother, she raised six kids on welfare by herself. So, we didn't have very much growing up. Now that I have this life, you guys give me back so much that it allows me, my wife, my mother, my brothers and sisters to have just a little bit better of a life. And if any situations come up that they need help, thank God to the fans and everyone that supported me and my family, I can actually help them out most of the time. Yeah, for me, what I see, I meet you this morning with a, with a Red Bull in the water, and all I thought was, It's just a cool guy and so normal, so no, no star lures or something, so he's just a normal guy. So that's, I really like it's very, very good. You, you have to understand that I was blessed by getting given the role of Star Wars, right? I auditioned out of 5,000 children worldwide, and by God's grace, they chose me. And for me to sit here and not appreciate people's hard work and the money that they pay for the meet and greet, You have to be respectful, right? You have to give a little bit back as they're giving you so much. It's not just money they're handing over. They're handing over hours and hours of work time that they had to go and clock in and do a job. You know what I mean? And then they come for that quick five minutes, two minutes, and they gift you with that hard-earned cash. How could you not be so grateful? I don't understand, right? 
Yeah, for, for me, it's an absolutely honor to sit uh, next to you because, okay, for me, it's a, a start from my childhood or my teenager. So, yeah, whoa, Boba Fett, so it's really great. And I'm also, I'm, I feel blessed. So, for me, it's a real, real big honor. You know, with Disney taking over the whole franchise, it's really become a blessing that I can say that forever I will be the kid that was directed by George Lucas. You know? And for the rest of the history of Star Wars, we will get amazing directors like J.J. Abrams and all the rest, but, I mean, George was the creator. He's the storyteller. And I can be proudly to say for the rest of my life that I was in a George Lucas Star Wars film. After all, you're a big part now of a very, very historic um, theme and very, very big brand. So um, after a couple of years, you were asked to uh, use your voice in Clone Wars. Uh, was this a different feeling for you to be involved in this project? 100%. So if you see, I haven't stopped moving. When I talk, I move like, you know, I'm just very, very articulate with my hands and gestures. Well. In a cartoon, you're not allowed to move. You have to hold your body almost and use that through your voice in order to be able to express what you feel and what the emotion is behind that voice. Well, with that, in acting, I can easily be like, hey, you, I don't like that. But within voice acting, you have to be like, hey, you, I don't like that. So it's almost similar, but without using that body, right? Because when you use this, either the microphone picks it up or it loses a little bit of that power because you're using body movement away from the, the microphone, right? Yeah. Uh, today I checked your Twitter page and there were some tweets where you, uh, where you're saying you're finally a uh, US citizen and you were, uh, you're turning 30 uh, in two weeks, I guess. And my, question, my first question was, what is coming up for you? Um, you know, I'm turning 30 this year. And it kind of hits you, I think, with every man who's 30 and older. You're like, uh-oh, I need to start doing something with my life, <laughs> right, at 30. And it's kind of hitting me. I'm at that point. I'm like, well, either I better go back into acting or what I could do is just stop being a laborer, which I'm good at a hammer and a nail. I think the acting is going to be a hell of a lot easier. So I think I might go back to the easy route and the fun route, which is acting. You never know if Boba Fett will join our galaxy again. So when you're outside in the, in the public, in, in your home, say, I guess it's Los Angeles where you're living now? You're living in Los Angeles right now? I, I live in Orange County, California, yeah. oh. uh, right near Disneyland. Yeah, so when you're outside, is there some people coming up to you like, I know you. But back then, in Star Wars, you were a little kid, a little grumpy maybe, now you're a grown man. You know, it's funny, I, I went out with the Pop Funko toy company, their Asia side. I went to one of their, uh, a Rob Pryor um, art gallery that they did in L.A. And they asked me, hey, could you walk around with Rob Pryor um, with the camera crew following you through um, the premiere of, of Pirates of the Caribbean? I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. As I'm walking through, some lady's like, hi, Daniel Logan. And I'm like, hi, because I don't really get recognized very much. Yeah. But when I do, I'm like, hello, you know, yeah. and it's just really cool to be able to be recognized, you know. Um, so through that, I still live a normal life. But when I get to come to conventions, I become famous again, you know? And then I walk straight out that door, across the road, and I'm nobody again. You know what I mean? And that's the best thing about my fame, is that I don't have the fame where I can't go out of my house, I can't go do fun things with my friends. I can still do all that, but then when I come to conventions, I still get a little bit of the celebrity fame back to me, you know? And it, it's the perfect kind of fame I could ever have asked for, ever in my life. Yeah, I think Actually, so. Actually, there's a Boba Fett behind you right now, so... That's a Mandalorian. It's and he's a, a real good Boba Fett on our stage Everybody, right now. Rob Mason over there, guys. If you haven't seen Netflix, uh, Mud. He's got a new film on Netflix coming out. It's going to be phenomenal. But if you haven't seen him, he's on Arrow. He's on a ton of things. This is the great things about conventions, right? Is that there's new people and actors coming to this convention world all the time. And the more they come, and there's Rika back there, see what I'm saying? Which is full of celebrity love around here. <laughs> what a beautiful face. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying, guys? And we're here from all different places of the world. I mean, I'm from New Zealand, I live in California. Um, Rob is from uh, Brooklyn. Um, Rika's from um, 
Vancouver, and we're all here in Cologne, Germany, to celebrate our different stories, you know, with you guys. Yeah, you, you mentioned the right thing. Where you ever been, uh, have you ever been to Cologne before? Never been to Cologne. So my friend Marcus, I don't know if you guys know Marcus, but he's one of the heads of the 501st. He was the reason why I'm actually sitting here. He contacted me, asked if I'd come. The guy is phenomenal, right? I went to Legoland. I've been to um, uh, FETCON, JediCon, oh, good conventions. But this one seems to just have a big fan base where you see the love, right? There's a lot of love in this place. Yeah, there's a very big bag, uh, fan base. Also very nice cosplays and uh, very, very um, detailed costumes. Uh, how do you feel about Star Wars fans who eat, sleep and breathe Star Wars? I love them. I love them. Because if it wasn't for fans like that, I wouldn't have a job. I wouldn't have anything. We wouldn't even have a convention. So when we see people like that, the dedication, the time, the money, everything that goes into them building those costumes. Like, look at this beautiful blue toilet back here. Look at her. This took time. This took effort. It took thought, right? And it allows us to have a little more of a connection to Star Wars than just seeing some actor who's dressed like this. You know what I mean? When you go home and you have these pictures of different characters, people end up realizing, thinking that you really were hanging out with Twi'leks and, and bounty hunters and Jedis, you know? But I, I love them, to tell you the truth. And I actually thank the fan groups, because without the fan groups, Star Wars would not be as strong and as present as it is today. Uh, let's uh, get a step back from Star Wars and to this year, to Let's Play for Charity. So I think, for my opinion, a charity event also is a very big thing. Maybe you can say a few words to the stream outside, maybe for Donate, for Let's Play for Charity. Maybe you can say a few words for it. Yeah, you know what? I'm always down for charity, right? Let's Play for Charity, what a wonderful, wonderful idea. You're now taking two crosses, right? Gamers, or well, actually three. Gamers, nerds, and normal people, but we all are relevant in the same one tune, right? You have people who love games, you, love, you have people who love charity, and then you have people who are just fans of everything, right? So when you have a charity like this, it's something that you guys have thought of. It's not just like, hey, my name's this, throw money at my charity. It's like, let's play for charity. Let's play World of Warships. Let's play something. You know, you, you're doing something for the charity, and it's giving also receiving yeah that's right that's very very good uh, what do you think another part uh, so because we're finished now um what do you think about gaming do you game do you play games by yourself oh very much i'm a very big gamer so it's my birthday june 6. my wife said you could pick one thing for your birthday so i have adhd i can't focus i really wanted the vr playstation 4 but i didn't have enough time to go get it so i caught a guy on craigslist and bought a guitar instead so I think I'm losing my nerdy gaming ways, you know? I think I'm losing my friends. I have so many friends on PlayStation, it's unbelievable, you know? If I had as many friends on, face, on, on my PlayStation as I did on my Facebook and Twitter, oh, I would be, I'd be ruling the world. What kind of games you, uh, games you playing? More racer, first, more first, shooter? First, uh, usually first player shooting games. So I love Call of Duty. My favorite game right now is actually Overwatch. Overwatch is a really fun game. If you don't, right? Overwatch, thank you guys. I love Overwatch, right? The simple fact I love Overwatch is because you don't have people running and hiding. The maps are small and you're able just to continue killing and you have to play as a team, right? So you have healers, you have people who have got uh, uh, armored defenses, you have mythological characters. See, now I'm getting nerdy on you guys. You hear this? Um, but I loved Overwatch, and I was a very, I have every single uh, Call of Duty they have. And I even buy all the map packs and everything like that, you know, but um, I'm a PlayStation lover. I started at PlayStation 1 when Hayden Christensen gave me my very first PlayStation 1, and then I went to 2, 3, and now I'm at 4. So I love, love, love video games. Yeah. And guys, Battlefront, Battlefront, the next one's coming out, right? Yeah. It's well, got to be better. I mean... Where video games have gone, it's only getting better, right? With the Battlefront, we had the old style video games where it was kind of like a stock motion video game, right? Now, it's like you're able to be in the world of Star Wars. You're able to run around different galaxies, fight as different characters, have different powers. That's what I told the guys up at Lucasfilm. I love the game. That's the reason. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for giving your time, listening to my stories. Yeah. Thank you for supporting the charity. And you know what, guys? May you all 
have a little bit of the force in you sometime during this convention. Well, give it up for Daniel Logan, please. Well, thank big you, applause, guys. Big applause. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming to our stage, visiting us. It was a pleasure. And have a nice weekend at the RPC 2017.